Hi, I'm Aniston Blair Bergsteins, and welcome back to the Enlightened Womanpreneur Virtual Summit. I could not be more excited to introduce you to our guest today. Today, we have the pleasure of having Stacy Chilemi on. Hi, Stacy. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Listen, I want I want to let all the the listeners know um, a little bit about your background because you have um, you have done quite a lot in your career, and I think it's amazing. So, Stacy is the author of the Complete Guide to Natural Healing and, and Natural Remedies for Common Conditions, along with twenty other published books. She is also the founder of the Complete Herbal Guide and a recognized health and natural remedies expert with over. 20 years in the field as a health coach. She writes for the Huffington Post, HuffPost, um, Thrive Global, Medium, and she's also been featured on Dr. Oz many times, um, as well as other local news and radio shows. Stacy, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Of course. Well, um, I would love for you to share a little bit about your background and how you got involved in the holistic and, and natural healing world. You know, it all started um, at the age of five. Um, I had an ear infection and a little, uh, um, a little virus. Uh, my parents heard a gurgling noise from the other room. They came in and I was actually having a grand mal seizure. They had rushed me to the hospital and they induced me in a coma where um, I was in a coma for four days. And when I came out, they had told my parents that I had encephalitis and they thought before I came out, they thought either I was going to be paraplegic or have um, a very bad, uh, very bad um, uh, brain damage. And what happened was I came out and I asked for McDonald's French fries. And uh, yeah. And so, um, you know, over the course of the years I you know I was left with epilepsy so I didn't I didn't have um, brain damage and I wasn't paraplegic but I have to this day I have um, scar tissue damage throughout my brain and they can't locate the actual scar tissue so I struggled with epilepsy my whole life and it was like a roller coaster ride and you know as I got to college it was really trying you know trying to this late night studying and just the stresses of doing well and I was having constant seizures and constant seizures and I didn't know if I was actually going to get through this so I wrote an article and I sent it into the Epilepsy Foundation and they have a magazine and I asked people, how do you get through this? How do you guys cope with epilepsy? And to my surprise, I had like three to 400 letters all across the United States and Canada, people pouring in, telling me their story, telling me how they cope with epilepsy. And it was just so inspiring. I, for, you know, for years, I thought I was alone and, you know, people, there was millions of people around the world, just like me. And those letters made me realize that. And, um, you know, later on in life, um, right after I graduated college, I actually took a lot of those letters. They gave me great advice about how they did it. And I actually applied that to my own life. And that helped me get through college. And then, as I was saying, like I went and I graduated college and I started working for a big corporation in the city. And I thought I was going to be one of those hot mamas that worked in the city, really successful, having a martini on a Friday night right. with my girlfriends. And I had this whole thing planned in my head, you know, with the different pocketbooks on every day, you know, and so, uh, you know, it didn't work out that way actually you know I, it was one day I was walking in the hall and I felt a seizure coming on and I had nowhere to hide and you know I just mm -hmm. fell to the ground and had a seizure and one of the producers had just walked over me and kept walking and you know he, I can I was partially aware so I saw him walking over me I'm looking up and I'm like I can't believe he didn't stop and then 30 minutes later um, an associate had come by and said you know I'm really sorry but you don't make the requirements of this job and you know so at that point I didn't let it get down kept me down. I said, you know what, I'm just going to keep on moving. I'm not going to let it get me down. And, you know, I just, I just kept going along. I had, um, I had just started, uh, I started writing and I started doing um, different things. And I started to um, actually, um, I started on my own uh, writing service. And then I had met up with an herbalist and he had, he was doing a lot of research. He needs someone to do the research and writing for him. And I was um, researching all this information on herbs and healing and, and health. And I, I did, you know, I, I, I kept working and doing all this stuff. And I was like, wow, you know, this stuff could maybe help me. And I started applying a lot of this stuff to myself. Mm -hmm. And my seizures went from nine seizures a month to six to five to four to three. And I started feeling healthier. And I realized that what we really put in our, our mouths 
and what, how we live life and the sleep we get and, and everything we do, the stress and how we cope with it, it all plays a huge role on our health. Mm -hmm. And so I started a little blog, like I was telling you. And at that time, I don't know if you remember Blogger, it was like a little blog <laughs> yeah. on Google, you know, and I, I started started that and I had like 400 people come on and, and I thought that was a big deal. And then all of a sudden I started working for a, a website designer and he needed someone to write the content for the websites. And I started writing. He's like, you know, I could really turn your little blog into something really pretty. And he turned it into a big website. You know, he made it actually into this little blog into an actual website. And, you know, it, I went from having 400 people to 10,000 all the way up to 500,000 people. And then I realized how interested people are in and healing themselves and healing their bodies and wanted to feel better, look better and to mentally feel better themselves. And so I, you know, out of doing all that research and doing all this stuff, I actually put together um, a book called um, The Complete Herbal Guide. And that mm -hmm. was, you know, it was, uh, I had like you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different herbs, the precautions, what they could do for you, what illnesses they could help you with, what they're not good for. And, you know, and I just, you know, that's how I started with the herbs. And, you know, and it was, you know, it's amazing how our body reacts, you know, if we, we don't realize, but everything we do, plays a toll on our health in some way. And you might not feel it at the moment, but over years, things in your body start to change, things pile up, you know, even toxins and your body builds and builds and builds. And then over time, you know, that's when your health starts to decline. Mm -hmm. And people have to, you know, I, I hear people all the time saying they don't feel good, they have this, they have that. I'm like, well, what are you eating? And they give me the most unhealthy, you know, food regimen you can imagine. And they're wondering why they feel like this. So, you know, what we really, how we take Take care of our bodies and how we take care of ourselves mentally and the sleep we get really plays a humongous toll all the way even even to hair loss you know stress you know you can lose hair just from stress people lose their hair well how are they dealing with stress what kind of vitamins are they taking what supplements mm -hmm. are they taking you know are they deficient in any area so there's so many things to be learned mm -hmm. it's unbelievable mm -hmm. I, gosh, I have like so many questions for you. Just <laughs> I'm, I'm really interested in this. And I think, you know, obviously this summit is, is really geared towards um, supporting and, and being a support for female entrepreneurs. And I don't believe, and I'm sure you would agree with me that you can, you can really take on any big endeavor unless you come at it from a, a mind, body, spirit perspective. And yeah. how you treat your body, what foods you consume, um, like you said, how you're managing stress is all going to have a massive effect with how successful you can be because, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to affect how your clarity, your focus, your overall energy, you know, and, and so much of that is based on your, your choices that you're making every day with what you're eating. And so I think that to have a summit without having this as a topic of discussion would be would be ill-equipped and it wouldn't give you the full range of, of the information that you need so um in terms of of obviously and you kind of you gave us the background of how you got started and so you started this website mm -hmm. and and you know can you tell us a little bit about that and what that was really geared towards in terms of people coming coming to this website and how you were able to serve them you know, when I, when I started with epilepsy, like I had, you know, I, I was just focusing on epilepsy, but that as I was doing the research and I realized that when I wrote my book, Epilepsy, You're Not Alone, I used a lot of the, I had written, a, um, I had, when I wrote that letter in college, mm -hmm. I had like over three to 400 letters come in. And when I started applying all that stuff, I was like, wow, I could help a lot of people. And I actually put a lot of those letters together and created the regiment that I, I used that I learned from these people into a book. And I remember just getting a letter on in the email and she said, I bought your book in Barnes and Nobles and I was on the verge of suicide. And I, you know, I, I applied a lot of the stuff that I learned um, to, to, um, to my own life and I have hope that, you know, that mm -hmm. I want to live and you saved my life. And that's when the light bulb went off. That was when my true passion, like I knew what my calling was. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started the blog. And at first I didn't realize how big it was going to become. I didn't realize, you know, I just went with a, something I love, a passion and went with it and helping, you know, I had such a great feeling when I helped this 
this person that I, you know, it was a, an accomplishment that was unbelievable. And you don't have to save a person's life. Just helping anybody is a great mm -hmm. feeling. And that's when I realized that I was here to help people. I wanted to help people. And I was motivated to change people's lives. If I can make someone's life just a little bit better, you know, that's, that to me was the greatest accomplishment. And it wasn't about drinking a martini or making a million dollars. It was about helping people. This is what I was meant to do. And this is what brought me the most joy in life. So mm -hmm. I started that blog and it was a lot of work and it started out as very small and I kept working and working and learning and learning. And it's like, you know, I constantly did research and constantly figured out ways to make things better. And I put numerous amount of hours in it, but you know, I, I wasn't going to give up. I set myself short-term goals, long-term goals. I, I, you know, I figured out where would I want to be in a year? Where would I want to be in five years? You know, what is my true goal? What do I want to see, you know, and what, what do I want to see happening? And, you know, what I, I just planned everything out. I made like, I made a little bit of a journal, you know, to give myself a little bit of um, organization. So I can mm -hmm. clearly think out what my perspectives were mm -hmm. and what I wanted to do. And then I would give myself daily goals. All mm -hmm. right. You know, it's only 24 hours in a day. I still have a life. I still have a family. I still have kids. I have to make time for everybody. You know, I can't get indulged. And that's sometimes we all tend to indulge in our work. And then we forget about the people around us. And then we also lose gratitude. You know, there's, there's so many things in life to be grateful for. When you lose perspective in your life and you lose gratitude for the air we breathe, for the beautiful trees we see, and for the family we have, and the love that everyone around us gives us, we tend to, we tend to kind of get lost in our own world, and you tend to disintegrate mentally, you know, and so you have to really organize yourself and that's what I, I think making a journal if you really want to be a successful person you kind of have to try to organize your thoughts and you, ha you can't beat yourself over the head if you don't accomplish exactly what you want to accomplish it's you know it's everything takes time mm -hmm. and everything it's baby steps baby mm -hmm. one step leads to another step and so forth yeah I love that you talk about about that because I do think that as you you know, you're, you're building a business and you're putting your energy into it. And especially when it's something you're excited about and you're passionate about something that, you know, what you you've done and it's really your life's work that it's so easy to justify in your mind. I've got to give it all my all. I've got to put everything into it. But then the things that fall away or that, that would come off balance are the relationships, but also I feel like health. And, yeah. um, like even for myself, just this past week, my husband and I actually made a little checklist and put it up on the fridge. It was like, so I could remember to drink enough water and yeah. to make sure that I was going to dedicate 30 minutes a day to moving, like just moving my body and letting that energy flow through it. And so obviously, like, I would love to know from your perspective, you know, what are like the things you absolutely are the, you know, you have to do every day. Like what, what's on your checklist for your health and for your well-being? Yeah. I try my best and I try not to get like distracted, but I really like to, in the morning, I like to meditate. I find when, if I take a, a nice shower in the morning and I, I wake myself up and then if I take at least 10 to 15 minutes just to meditate, to sit down, to stretch, to close my eyes, to focus, to, you know, visualize the things around me and then to let go, <coughs> excuse me. To take the things in life that kind of stress me and to realize that the past is the past. We can't change the past. Mm -hmm. I'm in the present today. I'm going to focus on today and I'm going to move ahead. And now everything that happened in the past, I let go of. All the people you had fights with or the people who annoy you, you just let go. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Remember, we can't change people. We have to love them and accept them for who we are. And we have to focus on what makes us happy as a person and what's best for us as a person. Mm -hmm. So you need to focus on the positive. You need to really, a lot of people tend to focus on the negative, you know, take all the things in life that annoy you, make believe you have a dove and let it go, let it fly away and then focus on the positive and then focus on some positive things for the day, make some positive goals, positive reinforcement, and you focus on that. And that's in that 10 to 15 minutes, that just that short period of time mm -hmm. and the stretching and the breathing, just breathing in and breathing out and just stretching your arms up and then taking your, your, to your hands to your heart and just and letting it up to the sky, you know, mm -hmm. things like that, just like release 
release. And mentally, you know, even though it doesn't look like a lot, mentally you are releasing. And it brings in the good energies and then the, and the energy, the positive reinforcement, the positive energies around us. Because don't forget, people don't realize, or some people are just too naive to accept, but 90% of the world is run by energy you know mm -hmm. so if we have energy if we, you know the trees draw energy the pe people draw energy you know you're next to a positive person have you ever been next to a negative person and they're oh. talking to you and then you, by the time they leave you you feel drained mm -hmm. negative energy negative energy coming into you so release any negativeness in that period of time and maybe do some yoga you know you, you don't you can do a little bit of yoga a little bit of stretching and there's certain exercises you can even find on YouTube that will give you energy you know it, it, there's certain things certain poses that bring you energy also you know just and then just focusing on the day maybe exercising you know if you want to exercise a little bit and then start your day start your day and and just focus like I said on the small things the things mm -hmm. you need to do and keep focusing on the positive and give yourself a pat on the back because we all don't like to give ourselves pats on the back but <laughs> give yourself a pat on the back for you know everything you've accomplished so far in life that is so true. That is so true. You, I mean, I do agree in the morning, the first, that those first 13, like 15 to 30 minutes can really set yourself up for your day. Oh, most or, definitely. Or if you don't take the time to do it, it's when everything starts to go south. It's like, it does. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, you can't seem, you can't seem to quite find your footing for the rest of the day. So you've got to just reset the next morning. So exactly. in terms of, okay. So if I'm a, a busy, you know, entrepreneur and I'm trying to do it all, but I'm feeling like I'm really low on energy and I'm struggling. It's like my, you know, I'm, I feel like I have the brain fog. Like what are some things what are some actions or changes I could make maybe in my diet or in what I'm consuming that could make a difference for me? You know, I find sometimes like, you know, if people went and got a blood test, they'd find out what vitamins they're really deficient. Like when I when I, I went to an herbalist, I wasn't feeling 100%. Mm -hmm. I went and I got some blood work done. They do different blood work. They check you for things your primary doctor doesn't check. And I was low on so many different vitamins. And you'd be surprised is when you start taking all those different vitamins that you're deficient in, mm -hmm. and you start, you know, it's maybe taking a multivitamin, taking some zinc, taking some magnesium, and you take all these things and you start living, you know, more healthier life, you get energy, like, you know, and, and the foods we eat too, you know, ever, you ever feel like when you eat something and it lays heavy on your stomach, sometimes mm -hmm. it can make you tired too. So it's like eating a nice, healthy breakfast, eating, you know, eating protein, having a multivitamin, you know, maybe having, you know, certain supplements like, you know, like the, the beets are really, you know, they have beet supplements and they're really good. They really supply energy to the body. Those are really good too, you know, and it's just like taking the time to like, you know, to research what's best for your body and you know maybe add in certain things that will bring you energy in the morning so, mm -hmm. to help you and even certain teas you know green extract tea is really great you know matcha tea is really great you know like different things that can actually help you in the course of the day mm -hmm. yeah I started um this week my husband was like okay we're gonna try something new so we started in the morning rather than going straight for the coffee pot which is what I like to do um, yeah. he's like, we're going to start with lemon water and we're going to drink a big thing of lemon water and then wait. And then we're going to have, we juiced a lot of celery. So then we had our celery mm -hmm. and, then, and then we waited like another hour and then I got to have my coffee. And I will tell you that first day I was super foggy until I had my coffee, but then starting from the second day on, there was a marked difference in the clarity I had. Like I yes. was on fire and I realized I was like, you know, I think what's happening is I'm not hydrated enough. I get up and I immediately start drinking coffee and I probably yes. drink water until like 10 o'clock in the morning or something crazy like that. So I think that that is, it's something, sometimes you're just not conscious of what your habits are that yeah. are causing you to not feel as well. So I think it's interesting, you know, that you said in terms of like the herbal teas and like, I haven't even thought about those things. <laughs> <laughs> they have, they have a lot of these herbal teas have so many different things. And even like with the beetroot that I was telling you about before, yeah. like I, I noticed a difference when I started taking it. Like I, I, you take it in the morning and I, and I took it in the morning and the first time I took it, I noticed a difference. Like it, mm -hmm. ga it gave me a little pump me up, you know, but even the teas, teas, you know, herbal teas, you don't even have to put sugar in it because it's so 
tasty, all the different herbs that you really don't need. You could just drink it as is. You don't really need to add anything. And mm -hmm. a lot of them have, they have herbal teas, you know, just made for energy, you know, or even making your own shake. My husband loves to make shakes in the morning and he would make a certain type of shake and he'd throw everything in the blender and he'd go to work with it. And, and it, it gave him the energy, you know, mm -hmm. that he needed. So, you know, you could look up and find the different foods and vegetables and fruits that really could help you pump your energy up because I struggle with energy you know like in the morning I'm always a little bit tired and then I slowly start to work my way up so I try to do things in the morning that will wake me up you know and, and so easy to get out of course like you know it's so easy to get distracted okay I'll open my emails oh that person emailed me I have to email them back and then before yeah. you know it time goes by and again you're out of your you know productive course your journey you know you're, you're kind of the way you're supposed to do things so it's great to try to keep everything best in perspective and try to make yourself a routine and stick mm -hmm. with that routine but mm -hmm. routines can be broken you know if you find a better way and, and something better you could always add to it take out you know dependent on what your needs are right so right now, um, as the time of the recording, obviously we're still very much in COVID times, um, COVID-19, mm -hmm. and obviously there's been tremendous change in people's routines and their home, they're cooking for themselves at home, but also with that, um, there's marked increases in stress and increases in anxiety and increases yeah. in depression. So obviously being a health coach and working with people all the time, you know, what are you seeing and, and what do you think, what are you finding that works, has, has, is working to help people that are suffering from that? You know, so many people are suffering from anxiety. When I write articles about anxiety or I talk about anxiety, so many people either read the article or tune in to listen because they're all struggling. This is a trying time, you know. Mm -hmm. People aren't working or they're being quarantined in the house. They can't go out. They can't, you know, they can't see friends. You know, everything is, you know, people's birthdays. They usually celebrate it, you know. They can't celebrate their birthdays with their friends and family. And it's like these little things, you know, matter to people, you know, people are worried about their finances, you know, oh my God, you know, how am I going to be able to, you know, pay for this bill? You know, am I going to lose my house and blah, 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 blah. You know, these are all stressful things to be considered. You know, you know, all the stores are closed. People aren't working. Income's not flowing, you know, and people get really anxious. They're, they're really stressed out. And a lot of things can happen when you're stressed. 90% of all illnesses are caused by their stress related. So it's like, when you think about that, how crazy is that? You know, it's like, so you see how the total of anxiety and stress can play in a person's life and health so you have to look at ways okay how can we control and kind of decrease our stress you know and there are ways like you know like we mentioned before stress uh, meditation and yoga can actually help and then you know there's a, a supplement I like it's passion flower it's really good it's like it's like a, a natural Xanax you know people take it they even take it at nighttime and they, they take it you know to help them sleep yeah. <laughs> flower. Did you get that? Passion flower. Yeah. Okay. And and then um, you know, people do take C B D. They have, you know, there is you don't realize, but the, the marijuana leaf has over a thousand different strands in it. And mm -hmm. C B D um does not contain any any high um does it does not contain you can, does not make you high. It's the mm -hmm. THC. So but there's still different strands and you can pull out different strands to help you. And one way one thing that C B D does is that it, it helps with calmness and it can help relax you. But you you know, you, you have to watch when you take all these things. Things, you know, because they also taken too much can make you very sleepy and very tired. You could also put lavender, lavender, a lavender Epsom salt bath is great. You know, like sometimes you just taking a little bath by yourself, you know, could do the trick as well. And the, a lot, you know, either lavender people love it or hate it. I, you know, a lot of people say they love it. And then there's people that say, I hate the smell of lavender. Well, if you like it, you know, an Epsom salt bath is great. It opens your pores. The, the lavender goes seeps into your bloodstream. You feel relaxed. The smell you're your ear, you know, you're smelling the, the nice smell of lavender and that can also relax you as well. You know, some people, you know, tend to do the essential oils. There's different essential oils to help you relax. And there's even teas that you can drink to help with relax. And, you know, and these are all different things that you could do to, to help you and breathing exercises. Breathing exercises are very important. People don't realize it, but if you can take five minutes to just breathe and we sometimes forget to breathe,
sleep. You know, we're breathing, but we're not breathing the right way. We're not taking the big, deep breaths that we should, you know, and we're not feeling, getting enough of oxygen. People don't realize it, but sometimes, you know, the, those deep breaths matter, you know, and there's different extra breathing exercises that you can do that help the body so much and it, it can change and actually help you focus as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, um, I last week I have obviously since everyone's exercising at home these days, mm -hmm. uh, thankfully I have um, a couple of Kundalini, like Kundalini DVDs which, mm -hmm. man, like just 10 minutes of a good, like breath of fire will just snap you right out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yoga. Um, and I also think, you know, it's interesting too, because we pay a lot of attention to what we consume or some of us, most of us do, you know, we're more aware of what we're consuming from a, a dietary perspective, but you know, when we're home and we don't, you know, we're just surrounded by this negative media and this, you know, just so much social media and things going on. I feel like, you know, it's really hard sometimes to turn it off, but it's only yeah. really makes it worse. You know, it's like just this compounding effect. And so yeah. being aware of what you're consuming in all areas and maybe right. you know, putting on the news, put on an inspiring podcast or go, read exactly. or, you know, something that's going to make you feel better instead of worse. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it's interesting just to, to see the progression of that. Um, so obviously, you know, you, I'm sure you work with a lot of women who are um, business owners, you are a business owner yourself. And, um, you know, are there any other tips that you would provide to, to these women who are listening today that you feel like could really make a difference for them just for their overall quality of health and just, you know, mentality? You know, I, I really feel like sleep is very important. You know, like I remember um, I had, um, I was on the Dr. Oz show and Ariana Huffington was there and she was talking about sleep deprivation and how she was so engulfed in her career and do it and all the responsibilities she had that she did not, she forgot to not sleep you know she didn't get enough of sleep and then one day she collapsed and you know and then she realized you know it was a wake me up call people don't realize how important sleep is sleep is so important you know we tend to like you know and then sometimes we tend to with our iPhones or our, our uh, cell phones we tend to be on the phone the computer till the very last minute before we fall asleep and all that makes your brain not rest and you know and then you'll close your eyes you don't even realize it but you're probably dreaming about the last thing that you looked at and it's not relaxing to the body and then you wake up and you still feel drained and you wonder why you know we have to really give ourselves time to really you know to get rest and also you know and to to make sure that you know you're focused and if you don't feel focused you know you need to start doing things to make yourself more focused you know it could be the food you eat it could be the way you're sleeping it could be you know lots of different things but focus is very important being able to concentrate to being able to you know and and not take re rejections you know there's always going to be someone out there that doesn't like what you do no matter how great you are and not to take those things to heart and just keep doing what you believe in keep doing what you love and you're you know as long as you're happy with yourself that's all that matters i just love everything that you just said <laughs> it's, it's so so important and i think you know, especially when, you, when you're talking about sleep, it's, it's something that, you know, I think we take for granted and we forget that that is, that is the time your body heals itself. That is the time that you can kind of return back to home base. And, um, and when you don't allow your body to do that, it will, it will eventually come to bite you in the butt. Like it, it yeah. you cannot live, you cannot survive without sleep. And, um, and you have to make it, you know, a priority and also set yourself up to succeed with sleep too. I like to take, like you mentioned the lavender Epsom salt baths. Yeah. I'm doing that right before bed. Oh my gosh. I will sleep mm -hmm. like a baby as long as I don't pick up my phone before I get into bed and yeah. I wear something instead. But, um, I cannot thank you enough for joining us, but before we close out, um, I usually generously have offered some, a free gift and offer for these listeners. Do you want to tell them a little about it? 
Sure. Um, I have a page where I set up and I set up a couple of different free ebooks. Um, one is on, on face and helping you, you know, gain, um, you know, really glowing, beauty, beautiful skin. And I have one on anxiety and one about your chakras and that's the energy and, and, you know, learn about your heart, your body and have being balanced. And, you know, I have a, a ebook about that. And I talk about like, I have like four different ebooks from you to choose from that, you know, I, I hope you guys, you know, will download and check them out and give me your feedback. And also if they have anything that they really want to learn about, you know, let them tell me to, you know, contact me and say, you know, I'd love to hear more about this or that. And I'd be happy um, to actually, you know, you know, try to put together something for, for the, uh, the readers and stuff like that. And I also just wanted to say about, I wanted to just bring up, do you mind if I bring up about hair loss really quickly? Of course, yeah. um, I have been doing a lot of research. A lot of women have been approaching me about hair thinning. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, you know, I notice are very are women that are under a lot of stress that are, you know, or they're into trying to make themselves look better. And for men, you know, they could shave their head and it's all done and be gone, you know, but for women, you know, when we start to lose our hair, it could be very stressful and it could really hurt our self-esteem. And you know, to be successful, you have to feel good about yourself and you have to like who you see in the mirror. And we talked about that earlier. And so many people have come up to me and they said, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with hair thinning. Even like some people I knew that they, they, they went through and they lost weight and the shock of losing weight cause their body to, to that cause their hair to start to thin out. And then some people have it, you know, it's, it's hereditary and some people have it by illness and some people have it by stress. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's, you know, I was going through a time where my hair became really dry and brittle. It was breaking and I noticed my hair starting to thin. And when I look on the bottom of the, of the shower, I'm seeing like a lot of hair instead of just a couple of strands, you know, that you're supposed to lose that 10, 100 hairs, you know, each day is normal. Mm -hmm. And it was more than a hundred. And that's when I started getting really, you know, scared. And it was funny because at that time, a, um, a, um, hair restorations laboratory had contacted me and they wanted me to try their conditioner and their shampoo. And I tried it and I tried their serum and it, the th serum was to help make your hair, you know, thicker. And my hair started getting better and it started getting, I started growing and I started feeling better about myself because you know what, it doesn't matter how much self-esteem you have. You still, as a woman, you want to look pretty, you want to feel good. And if you don't feel like you feel, you look and feel good mentally, mm -hmm. you're not going to operate a hundred and I think that's part of the success thing. And even though people say looks don't matter, well, I think to a successful woman, it does, you know, or even to any woman, I think, you know, deep down inside, you, you might not admit to it, but it, it matters how you look and feel and perceive yourself. So I, I started using their products. It's all natural based. Everything in their products are natural. And I saw a humongous transition in my hair as you, my hair was like down to here and it started growing and I was like I was you know really excited so you know I tend to like to to you know tell people about the product because me myself I'm still using it and I'm still I'm just like so excited because I, I never realized at first how many people suffer from hair loss and hair mm -hmm. thinning and I you know you always see it on guys but I never paid attention until people started approaching me and then I started paying attention in public you know and then I started looking around I'm like wow, there are a lot of women, you know, especially around our age and older that are going through it, you know, and if, if we can make a change, especially naturally, because there's so many products out there and it's like, who do you trust and why do you have to spend so much money, you know? And so, you know, it worked for me and I just wanted to share it because, you know, I, I think it's a great product and it's, you know, by Hair Restorations Laboratory and, you know, I always like to look good and feel good and, you know, and it's just something I just wanted to share because I just see it, you know, happening to so many people. I can hear the listeners now saying, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, don't worry. We, I will make sure we put a link in, in the body of the email in the bio where you can, um, you can click and find out more. And obviously also a link to Stacey's website um, and her blog so you can um, start communicating with her. And I highly recommend that you read her book um, because I do think the more knowledge you have, the better you're going to be able to self-diagnose when you know, and, and feel empowered to make a change in your own health. And that's really what Stacey's all about is empowering you guys. So um, thank you so much, Stacey. And by the way, your hair is beautiful. So oh, <laughs> and it's just so like lustrous and soft. And um, <laughs> so I, I think that- Well, it's what, always like that. 
doing is working and I want to do it. Um, <laughs> thank you again for tuning in, everyone. And thank you, Stacey, for joining us. This is oh, you're very welcome. And um, continue to tune in, guys. We have so many more speakers to come who are ready to share their wisdom with you. And, um, and we are all about supporting you through this journey. So I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Stacey, we'll be in touch soon. And yes. uh, bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.